work schedules change, school schedules change, my toddler's nap time changes. What does an ideal week even mean? An ideal week is a piece of paper that you have spread out that shows you exactly how you want your week to play out. Now this is not going to be every Monday at 10:15 I do the dishes. This is going to be much more a large time block spread for you to go off of when you start planning your weeks a little bit more specifically. I design my ideal week on roughly a quarterly basis because work schedules change, school schedules change, my toddler's nap time changes. For the most part though, my week to week schedule stays the same. I have not created one of these spreads since back in March. It needs a lot of help and a lot of updating. So. Let's flip it over, we'll see what my spread looked like, we'll talk about what needs to be in your ideal spread, and then we'll look at my updated spread and give you some inspiration. All right, so this is my ideal week that I created back in March. And as you can see, there is a lot of room for improvement. First off, there is no explanation for what the colors mean, which is not very helpful. So. I had to spend some time decrypting what all these things mean, but you can kind of see what I'm getting at with the time blocks. These are very, very general block spacing. It doesn't have to be exceptionally specific, it just has to be a very intentional way to set up your time for an entire week. So this is the weekly spread that I made from March and I have already created an ideal week spread for this current phase of life. So let's set this aside and take a look right here in my current planner. I have my ideal week. So it is really, really sloppy. I put this together very quickly, but you can still see what I'm getting at and I've got it a little bit more um, clearly spread out. So. The first thing that we want to talk about is your morning time. Morning time is exceptionally important and if you're anything like me, if you don't write it down intentionally, it will not get done. So I set aside an hour for myself every morning, ideally. I'm not saying I do this every day or even most of the time, but in an ideal week, because that's what we're talking about, I would get up every single day and have an hour of time to myself. The second thing, number two that you want to put in your ideal week are your meals. So I am pregnant and I have a toddler, which means I schedule four meals, morning, snack, lunch, and dinner. I don't like eating on the road. I don't like forgetting meals. So having that set up in your ideal week is also important. The third thing that you want in your ideal week are any sort of chores that you know are very consistent. Right now, the only chore I have that's super consistent is my grocery shop. We do that once a week as a family on Sundays. The third thing, and for me, I think this is one of the most important things, is making time for your passion project. My passion project is this YouTube channel and my business. So I set aside a lot of time for my passion project because it is so important to me right now. Your passion project does not have to be the same as mine, but everybody has a passion and you need to make time for your passion or else it will not happen and that's just sad. So even if it's only 15 minutes in a week, something very small or something very big, it's really up to you, but make time for it, write it down and, and make it happen so that you can actually work on what you love. So for me, my passion project gets done while my daughter's asleep every single day. Um, she just takes about a two hour nap. So I am able to work on that for two hours in the afternoon. And then as soon as she goes to bed at night, which is at, at around eight o'clock after dinner, I have until it's time for bed to continue to work on it. So it's not a ton of time when you think about work, but four hours or so a day really add up. Then the next thing you wanna have in an ideal week is going to be your work schedule. This is something for most people that is pretty set. Your work schedule or your school schedule don't really change throughout the week. So I work four days a week right now. It's a very light thing, but I just teach gymnastics in the afternoon to kind of subsidize the bills and to keep me entertained. 
So that is what I do. I've got that written down. And then the last thing that you wanna have in an ideal week is when you go to bed and when you wake up. So if this is not a problem for me, but I know with some of my clients, they've talked about this being a problem for them, is staying up past when you'd like to go to sleep. So write down when you actually want to go to sleep, how many hours of sleep you'd like to get and what time you'd like to wake up. Um, it's implied right here, I'm waking up at seven and then I have an hour or a half hour of um, me time, which is like screen free reading or whatever it needs to be right before bed, journaling, and then actually going to bed at 10 o'clock, which gives me the amount of sleep that I need in this phase of life. So those are the things that you will want in your ideal week. Now you know what an ideal week means and what it can look like for you. So I would love to hear in the comments down below, what is your passion project? I love to hear the diversity of everyone's passions and getting some inspiration from you, what you're passionate about, and also how you're going to etch time into your ideal week for that passion. If this video was interesting to you, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button because next week we are going to be talking about how to set up your week every single Sunday. And using this ideal week spread will make that planning just that much easier. So hit subscribe, comment down below about your passions, and we will see you in the next video.